Hi, welcome to the next video in this Gearblocks tutorial series. If you haven't already watched the previous episodes, I'd recommend checking them out, as we'll be building on concepts introduced in those videos. In this episode, we're finally going to talk about gears, which are a big part of what this game is all about, and where things start to get a bit more interesting. So first let's take a look at gear engagement. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to quickly build uh, a simple construction here. I'll attach a couple of axles. With rotary bearings. Now, one part we haven't used before is a steering wheel. This can be attached to an axle, configured with a couple of keys, and then we can use those keys to rotate the axle. Like that. Now let's try attaching a gear to that axle. So if we do that, unfreeze the construction, and now you can see that the gear turns with that axle. So now let's try attaching a gear to the bottom axle. If I position it here, you can see a green arrow between the two gears, and this indicates that the gears are engaged. So if I attach it there, unfreeze, and you can see that the top gear is now turning the bottom gear. And of course if I position it so that it's no longer engaged, the gear doesn't turn anymore. I'm just going to attach a beam to this axle here. You can see it turn a bit more easily like that. Next let's have a look at gear ratios. So in this example, both gears have the same number of teeth. So we have a gear ratio of 1 to 1. But I'm going to duplicate this construction. And we're going to switch out the gears for some different ones. So let's delete these ones. And we'll add an 8 tooth gear to the top axle. And a 24 tooth gear to the bottom axle. So now this gear has three times as many teeth as this one. And so we have a 3 to 1 gear ratio. And if I switch the steering wheel on, hopefully you can see that the top axle is spinning at the same rate on both of these examples. But in this case here, the bottom axle is spinning more slowly. And that's because this gear has three times as many teeth to go in a full revolution. And so it's spinning three times as slowly as the top axle as opposed to the same speed in this case here. We can swap these gears around. So that the gear ratio is the opposite way around. And again you can see the top axle is spinning at the same rate, but now the bottom axle is spinning three times as fast. You can combine the gears in all sorts of different combinations to get different gear ratios based on the number of teeth between those two gears. Next let's have a look at torque versus speed in the context of these different gear ratios. So I'm going to increase the size of this beam here. so that this will give it a bit more inertia. We'll unfreeze those. So now I hope you can see that in this case here, the bottom axle accelerates to its top speed almost instantly. Whereas in this case here, the bottom axle takes a lot longer to reach its top speed, but that speed is much higher as we've already seen. And that's because, in this case, this axle has more torque being applied to it than, than this one. It's multiplied the torque being applied by the steering wheel by a factor of three, whereas this one has divided it by three, so it has 
three times less, essentially. To explain this, you can perhaps think of think of it like a lever. So, if you have this axle here, the force being applied by it from this gear to this gear is applied at the edge of the gear here. And if you know anything about levers, you'll know that that the uh, torque applied to an axle by a lever is proportional to the distance that it's being that the force is being applied at. So, in this case, it's what is that like one and a half units from the axle to the edge of the gear whereas in this case here it's only half a unit but then of course we also have to consider the other gear as well where effectively it's being divided in this case as opposed to here hopefully that kind of makes sense perhaps not the best explanation but I, th I think you can understand if you if you look at the the behavior and really the best way to get a feel for this is to uh, play around with the gears and experiment in the game. As I said, you can uh, try out all the different combinations of gears. And you can not obviously just use one gear at a time on an axle, you can have, use, use the multiple gears so we can have another smaller gear on this axle uh, engaged with a, another bigger gear on another axle and you would multiply those gear ratios together. In fact, there's an example of this in the uh, example constructions, this geared down motor. Um, here you can see that the motor has an 8 tooth gear engaged with a 40 tooth gear, which is transferring torque along this axle to an, another 8 tooth gear to a, another 40 tooth gear. So this is geared down a lot, you know, it's, it's multiplying these two ratios together. Anyway, so that's something you can play around with and, and try out and get a feel for that. But for now, let's have a look at uh, building a better motorized trolley. In the last video, we did this, we built a, a motorized trolley by just attaching the motor directly, or the wheel directly to the motor via an axle. But there's a better way we can do this. So let's just quickly build a simple frame here. Something like that. And we'll attach a couple of axles to it. With uh, rotary bearings. Attach some wheels. So let's attach a motor to our uh, to our frame and an axle to that motor. Now as I said in the previous video we just attached the motor directly to one of the wheels via an axle. So we were only driving one of the wheels. Really what we want to do is drive both wheels through this through this axle here. So now we can do that using gears and at the same time apply a gear reduction. You can see that those gears are engaged together. We'll configure our motor with some keys. I'm going to turn the maximum RPM and torque down for now. And we can attach a plate as well to our frame there. Now you can see that the uh, motor is driving both of the wheels. And uh, you can see that we accelerate very quickly to our top speed there. In fact, there's, there's a, enough torque to spin the wheels still. But what we could do, of course, is we could Whoops, we could uh, switch the gears around, and I think you can probably guess what will happen. Much like in our examples over there, we now have a lot less torque being applied to the, to the wheels, so they don't spin 
and slip on the ground, but we can reach a much higher top speed. So that's a, hopefully a, a, gives you a, an idea of how to get started with gears. There's obviously a, a huge scope for what you can do with them. So I'd, again, I'd recommend just playing around with them, trying them out. But uh, for now, that's it for this episode. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.